Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hi there, it's Patrick Moorhead back here at Dell EMC Live. Uh, it's great to be here, and now we're going to talk about smart manufacturing. We went from ice cream, IoT ice cream factory, to smart manufacturing. So I'm here with John Savage, Technical Director at Action Point Technology Group. Hi Patrick, nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So uh, there was a lot talked in the last segment about uh, IoT, is it real? It, it actually is real. Yep. Uh, the great part about your company is you are all about IoT and smart manufacturing. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, Action Point. Yeah, so we're, we're based out of Ireland. We're a technology company. We do both IT services and software development. And our IT services arm actually won Partner of the Year last week with uh, in Dell Europe, basically. Um, and on the software side of things, we focus on IoT systems integration. So we become the systems integrator, the, the, the single neck to ring, for want of a better phrase. So we go to the client, we understand what the business value they want to achieve out of IoT is, and then we bring in whatever partners are required to deliver the end-to-end -end solution, and then we provide via software the glue that brings it all together into a business solution for the client. Now wait a second, uh, I, thought, I, I thought this is computers, stuff just works together magically, right? There's yeah. all these standards where things come together and it's like, it's like shrink wrap, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, you just plug a few things in and you know, configure a few switches and off you go. Um, I wish it was that, it, that easy, I guess, a lot of the IoT solutions that are out there provide connectivity between one or two of the layers of the IoT stack. But when you go end-to-end -end IoT, you've got sensors talking to gateways, talking to servers, talking to analytics, and so on. To bring that together as a uniform whole, a uniform thing that the client actually sees value from, is, it, that's where our value is, is, is taking all the jigsaw pieces and making a whole picture from it. So we wanted to bring you on specifically to dive a little bit deeper into a customer called Alps. Yes. And I wonder if you can talk about what is unique about that, uh, what are the things that worked, T tell us about the complexity and how you made that easy for them. Absolutely, so Alps Electric Ireland, they're a, uh, what, they, what they make is uh, loads of electronic plastic components for the automotive industry. So they would traditionally have done uh, window switches and, and uh, your AC dials, let's say, on your car but they won a contract for a worldwide single point distribution for a gear shift lever for a luxury brand of cars. So our first phase of the project was we delivered a traceability system uh, that dealt with all of the robots and everything involved in making that gear shift lever. And when we were talking to them during that project, they had a major quality issue around their paint process. And the paint process is notoriously influenced by your environment. Right. You know, if it's too humid, your drying time changes, the paint can crack. They spend an awful lot maintaining positive air pressure to avoid dust getting in and causing inclusions in your piano black surface in your <laughs> luxury car, and we can't have that. So, Which, by the way, we can't use the name of the luxury car. We here. can't, unfortunately, it's the not allowed. The generic luxury car company. Generic luxury car <laughs> company, absolutely. Um, so what we did was we worked with them to understand what exactly the problem was, and that's a very important point. We didn't start from the technology, we started from what the problem was. And the problem is there's an awful lot of cost and management time maintaining the environment. So we delivered an IoT environmental monitoring solution to the factory. We deployed six clusters of sensors around the factory floor. We combined that data with the traceability data so we knew exactly what the air pressure, the temperature, humidity was for each step of the 120 steps it takes to make a gearshift lever. And then using analytics, we're able to work out where there are correlations between increases in humidity and failure rates and so on. And that, that's, that's the heart of the, the we're challenge. We're talking about a gear shift now, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. You'd be okay. surprised how much goes into each individual component in a car. It's, it's yeah, pretty Yeah, so obviously it's a brand that literally nothing can go wrong. Absolutely, no. It's, Everything has to be perfect for this. It's premium. And because the gear shift lever is life critical, if there's any rework required, it can't actually be reworked. It has to be thrown out. So you could invest your entire uh, process in getting a gear shift lever to the very last step, right. and if at that point there's a speck of dust under the paint, the whole thing is lost. So there's a huge sunk cost there, so every step has to be perfect along the way, and that's what we try to shine a light onto via IoT. So what were some of the challenges that, that went into that? You know, I was trying to you know, make a joke around, there is nothing that's plug and play yet. Yeah. Uh, this is not a shrink-wrapped environment here. Yeah. Uh, it's very challenging. So what were some of the challenges that, that you encountered and, and got over? Yeah, I guess uh, the, the two main challenges would be maintaining business as usual and also um, understanding what it is you're trying to deliver. 
So on the trying to deliver side of things, we can do really cool stuff with IoT. Like there's, yeah. there's lots of really exciting things you can do, but will it deliver value to the client? And understanding what those questions are that you're trying to answer, that actually took probably two or three weeks at the start of the project. It took as long to understand what those questions were as it did to build the initial version. Yeah, of the so, so maybe taking it from a board or an executive dictate, yes. which says, listen, I want you to get some of that IOT in action yeah. here, right? Yeah. I'll have a red <laughs> IOT, please. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we try and turn it into something concrete. That, that was one, and then the other one is, when you're dealing with a factory that's a production facility, like time really is money. There is a huge throughput, a huge run rate going on. So if you kind of say, well I need to shut down the line for an hour while I install my little IOT stuff, it, it, it doesn't go down too well. It doesn't go over well, no. very well, does it? No, so what we focus on is what we call a minimally invasive approach to delivering IOT solutions. So we will literally put as little as possible on the line to make sure everyone sees the value and once we could do that and there's full buy-in, then we'll go for a bigger bang approach to, to make it fully production ready. So it's, it's not just technical consulting you're doing, no. you're almost doing management consulting. Absolutely. In a way to get people, and, and my research firm, More Insights and Strategy, yep. uh, we've been talking about the industrial IoT before it was cool. In fact, uh, it was M to M before all these yep. things started talking to each other. And, and a lot of this was getting IT to talk to OT. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's nice that we finally have that vernacular. Yes. Uh, and, and we can kind of wrap ourselves around it, but it's really getting IT and OT talking, and there's uh, job security <laughs> that's sometimes in there, not non-invented here yep. uh, type syndrome. And so it's almost like you're playing that type of role too. I think that's really interesting. Ab absolutely, like sometimes uh, if you go into an IoT project at the IT layer, it's actually going to be a very challenging uh, solution because IT is focused on just getting the, 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 the business running, let's say. That's kind of a yeah. general focus of IT. Um, but IoT, it, it's often a brand new service, a brand new delivery mechanism, or it needs serious change in how uh, the processes work for everybody in the organization. So it can be a real disruptor off your organization. So if you're going in at just the IT layer, you're not going to win, you have to go in at the CXO layer. Wait, let's uh, go to a poll question here. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is our first poll question on Dell EMC Live, and essentially, you just need to tweet to the hashtag, uh, what is the main barrier to using IAOT in your manufacturing facility? Uh, is it management buy-in? Unclear what can be achieved? Fear of production impact? Time and budget? So again, uh, tweet your answers to hashtag Dell EMC Live, and uh, we'll read this out at the end of the segment. Oops. Sorry to interrupt there. No worries. Uh, so tell me something interesting about the Alps project that you didn't expect. Okay, yeah, there was, I guess one was uh, usually technology is kind of hidden away, and uh, the, the plant manager there, the quality manager who's the main champion of the project, when we brought in the Edge 5000 gateway, which was the heart of the solution, when we brought in the Edge 5000 gateway, we were like, okay, which cabinet do you want us to stash it in? He's like, no, 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 that has to be front and center. So he <laughs> wanted it hanging on a pillar in the center of the whole production facility so okay. people could see that there's innovation going on. So it's not in an HVAC shaft, shaft or an elevator shaft that's no, no. hidden, it's, it's front and center. Absolutely, so okay. it's seen as that sort of strategic differentiator uh, because they do bring people on plant tours. You know? Ah, so it's, interesting. It's interesting. I think I may, have, I may have gone on one of those plant tours yeah, yeah. on the generic luxury brand car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Cool. Did you run into any, uh, 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 what was the biggest roadblock that you had to get through in addition to having this industrial server, the Dell Industrial IoT server, hanging in the front lobby? Yeah, I guess uh, roadblock-wise, uh, the hardest part was we're, we're software engineers, we're used to living in a controlled, almost bubble, and when it came to actually getting the sensors deployed and rolled out and configured, that, that proved to be one of the bigger challenges. Because um, again, we couldn't impact business as usual, we couldn't just rock on the door and have a look around, we had to make sure we were scheduled and planned in advance, and um, sometimes they had a habit of getting unplugged until we moved them out of human reach. Uh, so they were some of the major challenges just okay. around you know, making sure the sensors were delivering data on a consistent basis. Okay, and actually uh, I just realized I made a mistake on the hashtag. Uh, the hashtag is Dell EMC Poll. Oh. Uh, what is the main barrier to using IIoT in your manufacturing facility? Is it management buy-in, unclear what can be achieved, fear of production impact, time or budget. Hey, you know, somebody has to go first here yes. on Dell EMC Live, and you are the first, inter a second interviewer. With a first interview with a poll, though. 
Okay, very so we, good. We, we got that out of I'm, our system. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody likes to be the first, right? Yes, yeah. Trailblazer. Yeah. Uh, and we'll uh, hit this at the end and see what we come up with. Okay. So how does automotive relate to uh, any other business out there? You know, one of the, the knocks that M to M got was you build it once and you can't reuse it. Yes. Right? I mean, yeah. there's a million different ways to do this. It wasn't scalable. So how, how does how does what you do for Alps scale to non-automotive companies? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. I guess the, 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 there's a core architecture, there's a core infrastructure. How do you reliably get data from a production facility, do some edge processing to filter it out, convert that into real information, ship that into yeah. a cloud and do analytics and alerting and reporting on it. And we've, we've developed a tool set for that to make it easy to, to go forward. We know what sensors we need to use now, we know what gateways we need to use, we know what software systems we need. What's going to change in every single deployment though is what sensors you actually need, where are they, what's the information we're correlating with. So okay. the, the real new stuff that's required in each solution is generally on the reporting analytics end. But the data capture, storage, and forwarding is something that's reusable on a site-by-site on -site basis. Okay. And certainly it's not tied to automotive. Any manufacturing industry, or sorry, facility, would, would benefit from a solution like this. That'll be good. So let's move on to the next uh, poll question here. And this one is a, a real simple one. Uh, a yes or a no question. So are you thinking of doing an IO, industrial IoT project in the next 12 months? Yes or no? This is a real <laughs> easy one. And the hashtag is Dell EMC poll. Hashtag Dell EMC poll. And let's see, uh, let's see what we get so back. There, I think yeah, that yeah. first question might have been uh, uh, too deep a here. A slow burn. So yeah. actually we're getting some stuff in here, which... Oh really? Maybe we let this bake for a little oh, bit very longer. Good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Anyways, um, we'll hit this at the very end too. So, uh, if I'm a production manager running a factory today, mm. is this all rip and replace? Do I just come in and I've got to redo everything? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a major concern people have, all right. Um, generally speaking, no. Definitely not. Like a lot of a lot of hardware out there in, in the manufacturing facilities already has sensors that are going on, but the manufacturing facility is often like an island separated yeah. from your business uh, your business network completely. So for starters, we can use the likes of Modbus and whatnot to go in and get information from your existing facilities. Also, if you've got PLCs like Allen Bradley PLCs, right. we can talk to factory, talk to information off that. And also, what we can do is instrument existing facilities, and that's what we did in Alps, whereby we added the sensors on top of facilities. So an example, we're, we're dealing with a bottling plant, a water bottling plant in Scotland, where um, they have a, an issue whereby the line can break down, but no one actually physically can see it. So a very simple idea there for an initial proof of concept, definitely not production ready, but initial proof of concept is a microphone with a webcam mounted on the line, talk to an edge gateway, and just monitoring the audio. And if the audio changes in a notable way, take a video plus or minus 30 seconds, upload it to a cloud, and email your, man your uh, manager. So that's very minimally invasive, yet it means within a couple of seconds, right. your maintenance guys know when there's a problem on your line. That's hugely valuable. And that's something in IoT, we're all talking about the really big, cool, boil the ocean type things. Right. And sometimes it's those simple wins that give you a huge step forward in the big value add. That is amazing because typically, unless it's coming from the board of directors mm. or the CEO or something like that, it's not, hey, we need to do IoT. An IoT yeah. project, it's, uh, I, I want to completely redo how I do manufacturing. Yes. Yeah. Or I want to completely redo how I run my building and facilities, yeah. right? As opposed to, hey, I've got to, I've got to go out and get some, uh, get some IoT. Yeah. Incremental, incremental slow change is better than the boil the ocean approach where yeah. things get bogged down, you get resistance, you know? Yeah. So this has been super enlightening. John, I really appreciate this. Uh, where can people find uh, more about your company? Uh, Actionpoint.ie is our site and we've um, uh, a lot of IoT case studies. We've delivered about seven or eight case IoT projects into production. So if you go to Actionpoint.ie, that'll, uh, that'll guide the way. Excellent, thanks right. for coming on, I appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick, very yep. much appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right.